All right. So hello, everyone. So uh, I'm Yusha um, from UT Southwestern. So uh, I'm working with uh, Jenna Kanapka and Joseph Takahashi uh, for this kind of uh, human clock project. So uh, today is uh, very glad so uh, to get this invitation so I can present my postdoc work, which is try to understand what is the function of the human clock during the neural development. Um, because the postnatal developmental uh, process uh, has been described and wrapped up in the bioarchive paper, so I will just brief mention today. So today's main uh, focus will be on the prenatal development, how the human clock affects the human, uh, the, the prenatal development. Okay, so uh, one of the big questions that we try to address in the Kanapka lab is what makes us human? So obviously, there is very, uh, very extreme um, expansion of the, the, the brain volume has been found in the modern human, uh, comparing with our close relative chimpanzees, especially the neocortex. In order to figure out what is the underlying mechanism, recent work has, has done lots of uh, transcriptome analysis, try to compare the human versus the non-human primate uh, in, the, uh, in the different neocortical regions. And there is one gene has been always fine upregulated, which is the clock. So this is the data from the, uh, from the uh, immunohistochemistry work that has been done by Jenna before. And this is the single cell data analysis. You can see the inhibitory and excitatory neuron there has a higher uh, clock expression. And also this is the data that compared the human monocyte and the mouse. This is the bulk sequencing data. So, but the question for us is uh, clock is a very famous circadian gene. So how a circadian gene can be involved in the human evolution? That is the question we try to address. Or this question can be reformed as what is the human specific neuronal function of the clock? In order to address this question, we generate the humanized mouse. So we use the bacterial artificial chromosome um, basically, we pick up the, the, the chromosome that has, including the whole clock genes, and then we chopped off the other genes um, and only keep the clock gene, but uh, keep as many in the regulatory, regulatory region as possible. And then we transfer this gene to the black six mice. And these black six mice will breed to the knockout mice background. And then the heterozygotes will generate the six different genotypes. The two genotype heterozygous will go back to as the breeding, breeding pairs, and we are going to use the three genotypes for the experiment. So the humanized mice is defined as they don't have the original mouse clock, but has the human clock, and then the white type mice, and then the knockout mice, which is the mice don't have the clock. And we have another uh, mouse line we get from the Joe Takahashi lab, which is the uh, under the, the mouse knockout background, we use the mouse back instead of the human back to overexpression to rescue this, uh, this mouse dog. So here is just a, a very short uh, summary about what I did for the postnatal development. So basically we use this four different uh, genotype of mouse and mainly focus on the prefrontal cortex. And one of the interesting finding is we find the neuronal density got increased in the humanized mice compared with the white type mice. And also we find the clock has been expressed in more cells. Basically the proportion of the clock positive cell has been increased in the, in the humanized mice. Maybe due to this kind of uh, changing of the expression pattern, we find, we did a, uh, the RNA sequencing and we find the gene that associates with the neurodevelopmental function has been upregulated in the humanized mice. So based on the, the, the RNA sequencing data, we've checked the neuronal morphology and we find the dendritic arborization got increased and also the spine density also got increased. So based on the increasing of the neuronal density and also the 
complexity of the dendritic organization and the spine density, it might be it changed the functional new neuronal connectivity. So this kind of increasing of the functional neuronal connectivity probably result in uh, what we find in the electrophysiology, which is the increasing of the frequency of spontaneous EPSD. And also we find uh, this increasing of uh, the better performers in the cognitive test. Okay, so this is the what, what we did for the postnatal development, just a quick uh, summary. And there's a, some other interesting finding in the postnatal development, which is we find the clock knockout mice actually decrease the relative cortical thickness comparing with the humanized and white type mice. But it didn't change the overall animation. It's just decreasing the cortical thickness. That is one interesting thing. And another thing which I just mentioned is the humanized mice increase the cell density comparing with all of the other uh, genotype of the mice, including the mouse overexpression uh, rescue line. And also I look at the neuron and the oligodendrocyte, we got the same uh, result. Basically, it's just the humanized mice increase the overall cell density in the frontal cortex. So these results make us think maybe the human clock also plays some role in the neurogenesis uh, stage, which is the prenatal development. So that is the reason uh, we try to look at the prenatal development uh, in the human clock functions. So. First thing we want to check if the human clock is, uh, or the clock is really expressed in the, the embryonic stage. So this is the data from the human bulk RNA sequencing. This is the date of birth. And you can see that uh, the clock has already been expressed in a, in a good amount in the prenatal development in the human. And this is the data from the, from the mouse embryo developmental stage. So you can see that this is the cell type that shows the, the, the clock expression. Actually, it's the highest uh, clock expression cell type, which is the progenitor -like cell types. So that is very, suggests that clock probably already do something in the progenitor stage. So now we have the transcript. We try to see if the, the protein is also exists. So we checked the, the old literature. There is a paper that find the embryonic uh, stem cell didn't have the clock clock protein expression. This is the Western block, and this is the IHC result. But go to the differentiated neuron, it shows the clock expression. So that makes us to think, okay, so if the if the, the, the clock is really expressed in the neuro, neuro stem cell, so this, so basically this is the, the developmental process of the of the stem cell. So this is the embryonic stem cell or the IPSC, and it goes through the neural stem cell and finally become the neuron or the other gliers. So now we know the clock is not exist in the embryonic stem cell, but it exists in the neuron. So now the question mark is here, if that is exist in the neural stem cell. Okay. So just give give you a little bit background about the embryonic uh, development of the neocortex. So this is the, the schema of uh, the, the development of the neocortex. So uh, the cortical plate and intermediate zone is the region that, that harbors the, the neurons. But the, the subventricular zone and the ventricular zone are the region that harbor all of the neural stem cells. There were two different type of two major different type of the neural stem cells. So one is the uh, SOX2 and PAX6 positive cell, which is the radio glia. It mainly do the cell self proliferation process. And the other big type is the intermediate progenitor, which is expressed the TBR2, which is give birth to the neurogenic uh, proliferation, give birth to the neurons. So with that, we do the staining, do the immunohistochemistry of the clock and try and find in the E14.5, actually we can see the clock is already, the protein is already expressed in the ventricular zones. And if we go to the E16.5, we can see the clock actually expand their expression in 
uh, to the sub brain trigger result already. And then we try to figure out in which uh, neural stem cell type is really expressed the clock. And we find this kind of very interesting result. So here you can see the clock is only expressed in the PAC6 positive cell, but not the TBR2 positive cell. So that suggests the clock is only expressed in the radioglia, but not the intermediate progenitors. <clears throat> so based on that, we do the cell proliferation assays. So we did the BRDU injection and a few hours later we harvest the, the embryo. And then we use the SOX2 to label the radioglia, TBR2 to label the intermediate progenitor and use the BRDU to label the proliferation cells. So here is the result uh, that we find in the ventricular zone. So here we just zoom into the ventricular zone. The red, red circle are the SOX2 and the BRDU double positive cell, means the proliferation radioglia. And the green circle is the TBR2 and BRDU positive cells. Those are the proliferation intermediate progenitor. And this kind of uh, blue circle or the dash line is, is the SOX2 TBR2 triple negative, but BRDU positive, which is the newly differentiated new, uh, post mitotic uh, cells. So uh, based on the quantification, we can see the radioglia proliferation rate got increased in the humanized mice, but the intermediate progenitor just have no difference across the, the genotypes. And there is another interesting finding is the humanized mice actually decrease the newly differentiated cells, which means the clock probably it keep the, the progenitor stage of this kind of uh, the, the uh, neural stem cell to keep them proliferating, to generate more neurons. So that might be the mechanism. So this is the ventricular zone. And then we go to the subventricular zone, which is the same thing. We find the radioglia is got increasing also the proliferation rate got increased, but it is not fine in the newly differentiated uh, cells and also the uh, intermediate progenitors. And go to the intermediate zone, which is, there is another interesting finding, which is this zone actually is the, is the mouse clock specific uh, phenotype we find. You can see the mouse, knock, mouse clock knockout mice shows a decreasing of the radioglia proliferation rate, even if it is marginal. Um, and also it's decreasing the newly differentiated uh, cells in the intermediate zone. So that suggests the clock, mouse clock also do some neuro, a neurodevelopmental function in the prenatal, but just different from the human. Um, and then we go to the up layer, the, uh, the subplate, which is the, the, the region that generate the neurons. So we find the human, uh, the humanized mouse uh, increased the newly differentiated cell density in, the, in this region. That suggests the human clock is promote the differentiation. So just a brief summary. So we find the clock is exclusively expressed in one cell type, which is the radioglia as early as the E14.5. And the human clock enhanced the proliferation of the radioglia in both ventricular zone and subventricular zone. And the human clock maintained the, the progenitor phase of the radioglia in the ventricular zone while it promote the differentiation in the subplate. And the mouse clock actually they also uh, show some uh, neurodevelopmental function. It regulate the differentiation and the uh, radioglia proliferation in the intermediate zone at the E16.5. So, but this, this kind of function is different from the human clock. So one of the mechanisms that can explain this kind of uh, increasing of the cell density in the neural cortex in the humanized mice, it might be it maintained the cell amplification division of the radioglia and the germinal zone, but promote the post-mitotic differentiation and the neurogenic zones. So for the future work, because I've already shown um, there, there is cell type and the location specific um, function that associate with the clock. So in the next step we want to do is to combine the, the single nuclear RNA sequencing and spatial transfer try to understand what is the molecular mechanism. 
And another direction is this is the the development map I sh I showed you late uh, previously, but this is the the case for the mouse. So for the human, actually there is a a big a, a cell type that it has been extremely expanded, which is the basal radiolia. It forms a new zone, which is the OSVZ, the auto uh, subventricular zone. This kind of zone has been totally missing in the in the mouse. So in order to study this kind of question, we we need to grow the uh, the knock uh, the clock knockout human FKSD ultimately, and then we can specifically look at how the clock affects the basal radiolia in the OSBC. So with that, I want to thank uh, the organizer and also the people in in my lab, especially Jenna Kalopka and the Joe Takashi and also Jay Gibson. Lab. And also this finding that uh, support my work and also all of your attentions. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Yushang. Uh, another very interesting presentation. So we have a, a question, um, which is, uh, can you comment on the regulatory regions of clock in human versus mouse and non-human primates? Is there a human specific enhancer that upregulates clock? at this time, I mean, in those stages of, of uh, neural development? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a very good question. So um, let me just uh, pour out. We have analyzed the different region. So Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So this is the regulatory region we did the analysis between the, the mouse and the human. So this is the clock uh, loci. So uh, you can see uh, all of this kind of, uh, uh, the green one are the promoter region and the the, the red one are the process mode um, enhancer region and the yellow one is the distal uh, enhancer region. You can see, I use this kind of dash line to connect the homologous uh, enhancer region. So you can see, actually, there is many of the places that uh, there is no homologous between the human and the mouse. Um, and uh, overall, the human has much, much more enhancer region. That means more complicated uh, developmental or the spatial temporal uh, regulatory of these clock genes. Um, but for this particular question, uh, the person asked me, uh, I cannot answer because I don't know what which is the enhancer that really uh, uh, like drive the expression in a certain developmental stage or the certain cell types. But that's a good question. It can be one of the future directions. Yes. Thanks very much. Uh